Recently, I've been posting videos going over the top quarterback transfers from the offseason. Well, there just weren't some big-time quarterbacks that transferred, as a number of really good wide receivers also switched schools this offseason. So, today, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 wide receiver transfers from this offseason. Before we get to today's video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you love college football, then this is definitely the place for you. Also, make sure to drop a like on this video as well, as it helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it helps out that YouTube algorithm. We'll start off this list with Mario Williams, who's going to reunite with his former quarterback, Caleb Williams, at USC. Mario left Oklahoma after only one season. According to ESPN, he was the number one ranked wide receiver of his recruiting class. As a true freshman, Williams had 35 receptions for 400 yards and 4 touchdowns. He entered the transfer portal one day after Caleb Williams announced that he'd be transferring as well. At USC, I expect the Williams duo to be one of the better quarterback wide receiver duos in the entire country. Former Georgia wide receiver Jermaine Burton transferred to Alabama after finishing second on the Bulldogs in receiving yards last season. In his two years with Georgia, he caught 53 passes for 900 yards and 8 receiving touchdowns. Against Michigan in the college football playoff, he caught a 57-yard pass for a touchdown. He didn't quite live up to expectations while at Georgia, but now he's going to head to Alabama where he's likely going to emerge as Bryce Young's number one target. Alabama lost all their top wide receivers to the NFL draft, so Burton is really going to have a chance to emerge as one of the top wide receivers in that room. It's not often you see a player leave the team that he just won a national championship with, but it's tough to fault him for wanting to go from catching passes from Stetson Bennett to Bryce Young. Texas has landed a number of solid players from the transfer portal this offseason, including wide receiver Isaiah Nayer. The former Wyoming wide receiver actually committed to Tennessee early in the offseason, but he flipped his commitment to Texas. He was one of the more underrated receivers in the portal, and I think he's going to be a huge get for the Longhorns. Last year for Wyoming, he had 44 catches for nearly 900 yards. He was averaging 20 yards per reception. In addition, he had 12 receiving touchdowns as well. He's a big play threat and is going to join an already loaded Longhorns offense. Another wide receiver that left Oklahoma was Jaden Hazelwood, who transferred to Arkansas. He was the number one wide receiver recruit back in 2019, but just hasn't lived up to expectations while with the Sooners. In three seasons, he's caught 62 passes for 750 yards with six touchdowns. He did have career highs across the board last year, but they still were numbers you'd expect out of a former top recruit. He gets a change of scenery and will fill in for Traylon Burks, who emerged as one of the top receivers in the nation last year while at Arkansas. Another underrated gem in the transfer portal was former UTEP wide receiver Jacob Cowing, who announced he'd be transferring to Arizona. During his career at UTEP, he emerged as one of the best receivers in the history of the program. In his three years there, he caught 140 passes for 2,600 yards and 13 touchdowns. 2021 was by far the best season of his career as he finished with 69 catches for 1,400 yards and 7 receiving touchdowns. He also averaged 19 yards a carry and had a rushing touchdown as well. The Wildcats have slowly been building a really nice team. They added transfer quarterback Jaden Delora and also added a pretty good wide receiver as well. You don't often hear about Rutgers adding a top player in the transfer portal, but former Syracuse wide receiver Taj Harris announced that he'd be heading there. Early on in the offseason, Harris initially committed to Kentucky, but he entered the transfer portal once again and ended up with Rutgers. Harris finished his Syracuse career ranked 5th in team history with 151 receptions, and he ranked 8th with just under 1,900 receiving yards. He also added 10 receiving touchdowns as well. He earned third-team All-ACC honors in 2020, ranking 5th in the conference in receptions per game and 6th in receiving yards per game. Back in 2018, he set true freshman records in catches and receiving yards. Last season, though, he left the program after only three games. He's going to be the number one option on a Rutgers offense that ranked 114th nationally in passing yards last season. We talked about USC at the beginning of the video, and they also added another wide receiver from the portal, this one being Jerry Rice's son, Brendan Rice. He didn't play much while at Colorado, as in his two seasons, he racked up only 27 catches for 400 yards and 5 touchdowns. 
Last year, he averaged 28 yards per kick return and racked up nearly 500 total yards in the return game. He did have two breakout games though last season, showing his big play ability. Against Arizona, he caught three passes for 110 yards. Then against Oregon, he caught five passes for 100 yards with a receiving touchdown, while also having one rush for 17 yards and returning six kickoffs for 162 yards. He can do it all, and I'm sure he's going to thrive in USC's new offense. After spending four years with Florida, Jacob Copeland announced he'd be transferring to Maryland. He leaves after having his best season with the Gators, where he finished the 2021 campaign with 41 catches, 650 receiving yards, and 4 touchdowns. During his time in Florida, he caught 86 passes for 1,400 yards and 9 touchdowns. With the Terps, he's likely going to emerge as their top offensive weapon in the receiving game. Gus Malzahn added one of his former players from Auburn as UCF brought in Kobe Hudson. After a quiet freshman campaign, he really broke out as a sophomore in 2021. Last season, Hudson caught 44 passes for 600 yards and 4 touchdowns. He really started to break out towards the end of the season when he caught a touchdown in three straight games to finish the year. His best game of the season came against Mississippi State, where he caught eight passes for over 100 yards with a receiving touchdown. We'll wrap up this list with an FCS wide receiver making the jump to the FBS level, as Antoine Wells is transferring from James Madison to South Carolina. As a redshirt freshman this past season, he caught 83 passes for 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns. All those numbers had him ranked inside the top four in all of the FCS. He ranks third all-time in James Madison history in receiving touchdowns, is ninth in career receiving yards, and ninth in career receptions. And he did all of that in a little over a season and a half of games played. He'll head to South Carolina, who added numerous offensive weapons this offseason, including starting quarterback Spencer Rattler. So which name on this list do you think is going to have the biggest impact at their new school? Was there another wide receiver who transferred that I didn't mention that should have been on this list? Let me know in the comment section down below and I might make another top 10 video. If you guys haven't done so yet, now is the perfect time to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you love college football, then this is definitely the place for you. Also, give that like button a quick click as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video.